I truly believe that when you begin to trust yourself, things will change in your life. Quit asking for people's opinion and quit seeking validation. Uh, welcome to another edition of the Social Proof Podcast, where we find dope people who did dope stuff, and they can actually point to it. They can show the receipts. And Andrea, you are a receipt shower. <laughs> people know. Yeah. People know. Your name been ringing in these streets for a long hey, time. Hey, now. you know, pop collar. I heard that. <laughs> so I'm going to have you um, kind of introduce yourself, and then I just need you to promise me that you are going to teach everything you got. To our I bring all the juice, man. Let's I got do you. It. Let's do it. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Let's get started. So, hello, everyone. My name is Audrea Richmond. I'm a marketing and lunch strategist. Um, I work directly with my clients to teach them how to develop their personal brands, uh, build out their product suites, like really knowing what to sell. And my specialty is marketing campaigns, really showing you how to create a splash in the market when you're ready to promote and market what you sell. Mm, okay. So, there are a bunch of people that are super gifted and talented, yes. like, um, and they're walking in their passion and their purpose. Yes. But they can't seem to get the business off the ground. Ah. Have you noticed that? Yeah. So, walk walk me through before you were, like, this powerhouse marketer. Right. right? Yeah. Take what back. were your struggles? <laughs> ah, my struggles was um, not thinking I was good enough. Mm. Or not even really knowing what I wanted to do. Because, like, nobody really told me what to do. Like, mm. my parents weren't like, oh, you got to be a doctor. You got to be this. So, I think I, for a long time, I was just doing whatever I needed to do to just navigate and mm. be wherever I needed to go, right? Mm. So, back home in Memphis, one of the things that my folks really did was just, like, work. That was the goal. Mm -hmm. If you graduated from school and worked, you was killing it. Um, so no, nobody really, like, promoted me to do anything. And then I ended up meeting this boy in high school, and he got he introduced me to the computers. And, like, that really changed Introduce the game. Introduced you to the computers? Yeah. What year is this? <laughs> what are we talking about right so now? So I was born in 86, so whatever age I, I was. I was 84, so you yeah. too. So but but you... I didn't, I'm telling you, when we grew up, it, computers was just coming out. You remember We're... Sims? The video game Sims. Yeah. Yeah, so Sims, AOL, and stuff. and stuff like that. We yeah. didn't have a home computer. For sure. So he introduced me to a computer, and, like, that changed the game because I was like, oh, man, I, I was learning all of these things on a computer. Like, man, the computer can make a DVD slideshow. The computer can make bootleg CD, DVD. Right, right. Like, the, the computer can do all of these things. And it became this thing that really, like, drove me because I'm just like, oh, I'm kind of finding my purpose and my passion, but not really. I'm mm -hmm. just kind of experimenting with this thing. Um, and I would say from there, it was just kind of like doing that was like my first introduction to entrepreneurship, really. Where are you from? Memphis. That's why. Like Memphis, you was in oh, the country. Really? That's why. Really? Yeah, don't, don't, do it. don't do it. Don't do it. Like do it. Little, this is a computer. <laughs> How you pronounce it? Caprooter? <laughs> you know what? Computer. <laughs> <laughs> so so somebody introduced you to the computer and to said, the this computer. Is a, okay. This is a computer, <laughs> right? <laughs> and what was what what was um what was the first crack at, like, were you interested in it or you were like, oh, I was a... interested in it because I didn't know I liked tech. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I kind of like... You never was... did anything techie before no. that? No. Mm -mm. Just that was like, you got introduced to the computer and then like really get to know what it could do. And so mm -hmm. that kind of like introduced me to other stuff, like mm -hmm. video games, like computer games, not right, right, regular right. video games. Right, right. For you come for me. Right. <laughs> computer <laughs> games, okay? Like The Sims and all of that right, good right. stuff. And... Once I started to learn those things, that's what really allowed me to, I guess you can say, um, open up that entrepreneurship book. Like, I always wanted to make money. Didn't really know how or what I was going to do, but, like, I am just was naturally a hustler. I feel like in my very entrepreneur early entrepreneurship days, I was a hustler. Mm. I sold CDs. I sold DVDs. Mm. I sold graduation invitations. Um, I sold everything the computer could do. Like, if the computer wow. could make it, I would sell it. And that became my vehicle for money. So being introduced to a passion or a purpose, that really didn't come along to like later on down the road. Because mm. it was just like make money, like yeah. get money. It wasn't no, I, I feel like we live in an age now where it's like find your purpose, find your passion. Yeah. And I feel like there's levels to that. 100%. And for me personally, that first level was I didn't really know who I was. Mm -hmm. I just knew I didn't want to be broke. Yeah. That was it. That was the only determining motivational thing that kept me going was just making money. So, yeah. What was money like? What was the conversation 
like in your household around money? We never talked about money. I never, I still like my mama never talked to me about credit. I never knew about credit cards. I never knew about nothing. Mm -hmm. I just knew that like we would go to the furniture place. We would put stuff on, you know, payment plans. Like payment plans was the thing. Like you was killing it if you could go in and even get approved to get a payment plan. Mm. So we really didn't get introduced to money. Um, we weren't poor, but we was well off to an extent of being able to like have food on the table yeah. and have clothes. But yeah. we didn't. I got the fee laws, like when they were like three, four years late. Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, you're never getting no school. new releases. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. That's off the table. But you know, the, the thing is, um, and now that you say it, mm -hmm. I remember growing up, we would go to like Marshall's mm -hmm. or Burlington Coat Factory, and it was layaway. I don't know if they still do layaway. Yeah, yeah. But My first computer was on layaway. Word. Yes. But that's how we shop <laughs> yeah. in our household. It's like, mm -hmm. yo, lay I know I'm going right. to be able to put a, a little, I can get anything I want, and then right. I'll put a little something down. Right. But you and, couldn't take it home. And by oh, the time you got it, it, it probably wouldn't even end in pocket no more. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Yeah. Or you, or you put that money down and you can't quite get it yes, off and right, it just exactly. sits there. <laughs> Dang, that's crazy. Yo, I think now, though, uh, do you have children? Um, I have a stepdaughter, yeah. You have a stepdaughter? Mm -hmm. uh, what's the conversation around money now? Now, we still don't talk about money. How old is she? Um, well, my daughter, yes. But my, my mom and them, no. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, your, your stepdaughter. Like, what's the conversation like, now? We talk about money, but not my my folks, like my family members and stuff like that. Yeah. We talk to her about money around, like, getting what she wants. I think that when you grow up not having things, you're used to getting stuff that's been uh, given to you. Like, mm -hmm. uh, give me, you know, like not getting stuff new, not being able to pull stuff out the package, mm -hmm. being cool with going to, you know, the thrift store and stuff like that. And so that was my story. Like, my dad used to take us to the thrift store. I was just happy to go and get clothes. I didn't know at the time that, like, you know, we've, we've made going thrifting popular at mm -hmm. some point. But back then, it wasn't cool to go to the thrift store. Yeah. If you went to the thrift store, you were broke. <laughs> right. Every Saturday, my right. mom and my mom would go to yeah. the thrift store. Yeah. Or they had like these certain dollar days. Yeah. And yo, people- Or I, the tags be on the things and you knew you could get jeans for $2. Yeah. You got to look at those color <laughs> stickers like, yeah. oh. Yeah, this, exactly. Oh, you got a green sticker? Oh, yeah. it's <laughs> half off. That's crazy. Right, That's right, crazy. right. But I, so, so how, do you, how do you talk to your stepdaughter about money now? I think I want her to see money in the in a way of using it as a vehicle to get what you need, but also mm -hmm. using it to invest so you can have what you want, get what you need, and things like that. So mm -hmm. really, I would say her introduction to it is still fairly new. Yeah. It's not like super she? indoctrinated. Uh, she's 16. 16, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. we gotta push it now. Yeah, yeah. We gotta we gotta put it on the grind. Yeah, yeah. 100 percent Yeah. yeah. So my, my my daughter's still like she's 10 years old. She's 17. 17. Oh, yeah. 17, yeah. yeah. Oh, now is the now it's critical yeah, yeah, now. Yeah, and I'm I'm and I'm asking you because I need coaching because um, I don't spend as much time teaching my daughter about money as I should, mm -hmm. and I feel like an obligation if I have it. I want her to be happy and give it to her, but right. what shaped us was not having it mm -hmm. to like well, freely I know give. For, I know for us with me and Calvin, like we don't really give her money. She got to work for it. Mm -hmm. She got to do something for it. She can't just ask us for it. She can't be like, let me get a thousand dollars. Like, nah, dog. Nah. Like, what you going to do yeah. for it? <laughs> like, you got to do it. something for it. You can't just get it because we got it. Mm -hmm. Even now, like, no. <laughs> and when did your relationship with money change? Man, honestly, recently. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, like, and I, I guess you could say my evolution of my relationship with money has changed over time. Like, early on when I first got started, and, like, I started to really start to get money. Like, I'll give you an example. When I started making money online, like, really making a lot of money, it felt like I didn't deserve it. Like, you know, why mm. am I getting so much money and why is it so easy? Mm. Like, I had this really big deal with, like, why is this so easy? Like, I felt like a drug dealer at some point. Like, this is crazy. <laughs> it shouldn't be this easy. You mean to tell me all I got to do is make something in my mind, tell people about it, and then give me money for it? Nah, mm. it ain't that easy. You mean I ain't got to grind and throw no boxes and work hours and hours and hours to get it? Like, nah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And that came with understanding marketing, right? Yeah, so, absolutely. So walk me through like the beginning of your marketing understanding. So like back in the day, um, and I'm saying like I'm like super old, but like <laughs> <laughs> early on in my career, I would say in 2008, um, I started my career off as a professional photographer. I was hanging out with this mm. girl. 
and she was getting a photo shoot done. And the photographer, he brought out the lights and the camera and the soft boxes and all this stuff. And I'm thinking to myself, like, you finna pay him to take pictures of you? Like, it was, I was like, we take pictures of ourselves. Like, we go get the little, you know, the little portable camera. Oh, that's, for sure. Like, we not, like, we not going to the studio. Right. Like, you being extra right now. Did, were you still in Memphis? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I'm like, why are we at the photo shoot? So, at the time, she was getting artwork done for uh, her music career. And I'm watching a photographer take pictures of her. And I'm, like, blown away. I'm like, you finna pay him to take pictures of you. Wow. Bet. So... At the time, my mom used to develop film at Kroger. Mm. So we used to always get free cameras, but I never thought of it as a career. Mm. It was just something fun to do. And once I was at that photo shoot and I seen the two put together, I was like, man, I think I want to try photography. Mm. So I ended up asking him, like, hey, can you teach me photography? Bro, looked me in my eyes and told me straight up, no. I was like, no? You know, I was like, I want to learn this thing. Right. Why you just keep tell me? Sound familiar? You know, when people want to learn something, they oh, just want to just, sure. oh, just give it to them. Yeah. Like, that was my, my entire thing. And then people thing. get mad yeah. because, yeah. like, you, like, you, I don't know if they think you're obligated to help them. Yeah, people think, like, that was me. I'm, look, that was me. And when he told me no, and this is a, a big determining factor, do you really want it? Mm. You know what I mean? Because you hear a lot of people say, like, I really wanted it. I really wanted to grind for it. And at the time, if you don't know something, but you really want to know what you're going to do. So for me, I went to the library mm -hmm. in the bookstore, Barnes & Nobles, and I went in there and there was a book by Scott Kelby. He taught photography. Like, all the photography books were hard. Because at this time, I wasn't a reader. I right, a right, big right. reader. But I knew I wanted to learn photography. Went to the photography section. I was like, boring, boring, boring. Came across his book. And his book was so simple. Very similar to your book. Like, very simple. Thank like, you. your networking no-no book. Mm -hmm. Like, simple. Right. I love simple books. Um, and so in the book, he has like, for, say friends, you want the, the background to be blurred out. Mm -hmm. He was like, turn your camera to this, move the subject this far from the camera, right. and then voila, you right. got the blurred background. And that's how I self-taught myself photography. Mm. And literally, I became better than the guy I asked. Let's wow. just say that. <laughs> I became better than the guy that, that I asked. And so from there, I started to like really start taking pictures of my friends from school. Uh, people Did I you knew. ever meet him along the journey, like when you were? Yeah, good? we were competitors at this point. Like it weren't that many photographers at the time. Really? And I started the game was like he a hater? was he, he a, hater? a hater? You know, you just like all right, you go your other option. But like right, you know, right. it wasn't it wasn't like ah, <laughs> oh, let's you know hang out. But gotcha. at the time when I started doing that, uh, doing photography, it was super cool because um, I was meeting so many different people. Like, photography came like a networking thing. Like, man, you meeting this person, you meet this person, you taking pictures of this person, they about to have their first kid, they about mm. to do this, blah, blah, blah. So I meet all of these dope who's who's of Memphis, and it put me on real, real fast. Mm. Um, and so that's pretty much, like, my first official business, like, really getting into gotcha. photography. Um, and then from there, I kind of moved into graphic design. Did you... Were you marketing your business or how'd you go about getting clients? Honestly, out? friends and family. Just friends and family. I have friends and family that joined to the end. Mm. Because at the time I didn't know marketing. Yeah. Like marketing, I didn't really start understanding marketing until 2013. At the time, I I barely stayed in business and all of my businesses leading up to where I am now. Like with mm. my photography business, I barely got by with my graphic design business, I barely got by with our juicing business. We had a juicing business in Memphis called Juice Me Baby. Mm. Barely got by. Like, people knew about us, you know, because Memphis ain't really that big, right, right. but we weren't profitable. We weren't making a whole lot of money. And for some reason, we never thought outside our zip code. We was like, well, wow. all our friends and family know about it. This is far as we're going to go. Let's close wow. the business and start another idea. Not now that I know what I know now, back mm. then, I just didn't know how to market. Yeah. That was it. That was the, the common denominator in all of those businesses was having these dope ideas, but not knowing how to market it. Mm. So when did you start to understand marketing? So I started to know marketing. Um, I guess I let's talk about when I didn't know it was the issue. You know what I mean? Right. Like leading up to that. I didn't know Again, it was I'm the thinking issue. about it because you're yeah. going from business to business because you get to a point, if you don't understand like marketing, you get to a point where it's like, yo, I'm burnt out. Right. And I don't know if I want to do this. I don't know if mm. this is for me. You I've exhausted that just, all my resources. Exactly. And you start to actually think it's you. I suck. How come every business I start fail? Da, 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 da. Like, mm. And it's not, that's not even an issue. But at the time, I didn't know that was an issue. So I came across this book called Book Yourself Solid by Michael I'm Porter. sorry, real quick. Yeah. You start... So I guess in this process for me as an entrepreneur, I'm going from business to business, mm. and I never thought it was me. I always right. still had to, like... 
I felt, oh, well, it was the opportunity because mm-hmm. I know I'm talented. Mm-hmm. But on your side, was it like um, like a self-confidence thing or? I think it was just not knowing what you don't know. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Even then, I didn't even know. The, it wasn't until I read this book, The Book Yourself Solid Book by Michael Port. Mm-hmm. Read that book, changed the game for me. And he was talking about like how to put yourself out there, how to tell people about your business and all of that stuff. And I, that was like my first introduction to marketing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think in the first, it, when I read his book, I didn't like nothing I was doing. I was sick of everybody. I was sick of graphic <laughs> design clients. I was sick of photography clients. I was sick of everybody. And because I didn't know how to position my business, I didn't know about your ideal client. Hell, if you had a wallet, you was an ideal client. It wasn't like, <laughs> right, I'm right. only going to work with women. Or I'm only going to work with guys or kids yeah. or whatever. Like, it wasn't that deep. Again, I'm just trying to get money. Um, but when I read his book, his book really introduced me to being able to self, like, select your clients being able to pick the clients you want. Like, literally in his first, in his the first chapter of his book was like, fire all your clients. I'm like, what? Bro, I ain't got no money. What are you talking about? Fire all your clients. I'm Ooh. like, nah, dog. I'm not firing all my clients. <laughs> are you crazy? I can barely pay my bills. What I look like firing all of my clients? But at the time, you know, that was, that was used as a mechanism to be able to pick who you want to work with. And then me, I didn't even know, at that time, I didn't even know I had a choice. I didn't even mm. know I could be like, oh, I only want to work with these types of people. Like, again, I didn't really know the full scope of that. Yeah. And so that kind of introduced me to marketing. And then um, I started to apply a lot of these tactics and strategies and started reading some of Dan Kennedy books um, that introduced you to marketing and stuff like that. And that really changed the game. But by this time, we almost like about to be put out on the streets. Wow. So I'm just like, nah, let me Did go get this job. Did you fire all your clients? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> I like the book, but no, bro, you no, I'm not, no, no. Right. I ain't there yet. Right. That's, that's how I looked at it. I'm not there yet. I'm reserve this chapter for next time. Right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that's I'm not funny. there yet. But um, after, I, after I got to a point where I was really learning marketing, it was too late. Because at that time, the photography business wasn't doing as good. The juicing business, like none of these mm. businesses we were starting was doing good. So we getting pink notices on the door like, hey, bro, you about to get evicted. And this wow. is when you had to let ego go. You know what I mean? Like, oh, this thing ain't gonna work. This is when it's smack dead in the face, like, what you doing, bro? It ain't working. Yeah. It's just not working. Um, and I think going back, right, before, like, right after the photography thing, I did that for a while. I was a flight attendant at the time mm-hmm. when I was learning photography and, like, doing photography as a business. And when I quit my job, because I quit my job twice with no money saved. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you the difference between the two. The first time I quit with no money saved, um, I was a flight attendant. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, I got this thing. My photography business is popping. I'm, I'm good. Yeah. Man, I <laughs> ran out of money like the second month. <laughs> 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 a car uh, got repoed, the whole thing. Like, y'all just listening, was, uh, <laughs> please take heed to this story, okay? <laughs> get your pride, get your arrogance out of here. You done had a couple good months. Right. Slow down. Fam. Right, like, okay. look, only lasted a month and a half. And at the time when I was a, a flight attendant, um, back then I thought I was making a lot of money. I thought mm. I was killing it. I had a little Volkswagen. I was riding around town with the sunroof. Thought I was killing it. Mm. Nah, I wasn't. Now that I think about it now. But back then, you couldn't right. tell me nothing. Right, right. But um, I was a flight attendant. I did the photography thing, and I quit with no money saved because I just knew my photography business was going to blow up. Yeah. And what ended up happening was it was this lady in Memphis. She ended up doing like a like a talent show, a talent Thing. And she was like, come and take headshots of all the people who are going to be in this like show. And I'm like, yeah, this is going to be the come up. Mm-hmm. I didn't have no contract. And I didn't get paid. And mm-hmm. that I was banking on that money because it was time to pay my car she note. She did everything. the work and yep. they just didn't pay you. She didn't pay me. To this day, she still didn't pay me. <laughs> Say her name. Let her know. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you want to shout out. <laughs> um, um, but if you tag, look, tag yourself if you know he's on. So why why didn't she pay you? Because I didn't, I, I asked for the money, but she just didn't pay me. Mm. And I, you know, at the time I was young, I wasn't trying to like hound this lady. She grown in mm. my in my eyes. I'm grown, but she grown, grown. Mm. And I'm just like, I'm not finna like hound this lady. I ain't got no attorney, ain't got no contract, I ain't got nothing. So I just had to deal with it. Mm. Um, but so like, anyway, so getting out of that, um, I quit with no money say. So then I ended up like um, doing that business and then like just going from business to business. And then going back to like when after I read the Book Yourself Solid book, this is when I had to go and after reading Book Yourself Solid and like going through those different things and doing different things with the books, I was just like, Audrea, 
Like, you need to go back and learn. Like, you don't know enough. Yeah. Like, you're passionate. You got, you got purpose. You got to do all of these different things. But you really don't know what the hell you're doing. So, yeah. I went back, got a job. Right. Working at a mega church as a me- as a marketing manager, mm. and hold on, a marketing manager. Yeah, while well, I was studying marketing. marketing. No, <laughs> let me tell you how I got the job. So I got the job from at the time they wanted to know like what was your graphic background and right. like how do you know how to promote. And at the time I was getting clients, but I wasn't like own and popping, so I knew enough. But what got me in the door was my portfolio. They was like, wow, you did this kind of campaign. You published this kind of magazine. You, you, you've you done all of these things. And that's what got me in. I had no degree or nothing. So that's what got me in. Started working as a marketing manager. And I used that time to study marketing. This mm. is when I really went deep. Like studying from all of the gurus. I was studying copywriting. I was in um, just doing these little... $20 a month membership, stuff like that. Just like really like knowing it. Then I was like, I need to test this out. I don't even know if this stuff works. Mm. I've been mean, like wa- reading all the books, watching all of the videos, doing all of the stuff. Right. What if this stuff don't work? Right, right. I really hated my job. <laughs> At the say, church? Yeah, I hated it. I hated it. Is it still in Memphis? Yeah. Okay. I hated it. Hey, what's going on, family? I know you're enjoying the episode, man. But have you ever thought, like, all these millionaires and multi-millionaires that I'm interviewing, have you ever thought to yourself, yo, how did they put their course together? And if you thought that, you probably thought to yourself, yo, how could I put my own course together, right? Not about counting their pockets. I want to do the same thing that they're doing. Well, what's really, really important is finding the right platform, okay? So a few people that... Um, that I've talked to in the interview, they've really mentioned Kartra. So Kartra, it's a re- it's a uh, easy all in one platform where it's the easiest and most efficient. So it's the course you can create a course, put the funnel together, and the email sequence all in one place. Okay, so one of the biggest complaints is people have to pay for a platform, then they got to pay for the they got to go to you know another funnel company, and then they got to get the email, and they, it's just too many parts, but Kartra does it all in one, okay? So you can actually sell like my millionaire friends, okay? You could put your course together and sell just like them by clicking the Kartra link below, okay? Just sign up right now, okay? Go to go to the link below, just click that, and you got a 14-day trial, okay? So if you do that, you go through that 14-day trial, congratulations, you're an executor, okay? And after you already, after you sign up, here's what's beautiful. You're forced to execute now because you actually took the first action by clicking the link below. Then you went there, register, 14-day trial. You put your joint together. Now you lit out here, okay? So do me a favor. Do yourself a favor. Click the link below, okay? And, you know, you never know. You put your course together. You go kill it. You might be on a Social Proof podcast. I'll be interviewing you, all right? So, um, yeah, man, click the link below. I'll see you on the episode. What did you hate about it? I didn't like management. I didn't like management. You didn't like the management or you didn't like managing other people? No, I didn't like management. I didn't like how everything was organized. And oh, you didn't like their management? Though. Yes, okay, right. Okay, gotcha. And I also didn't like, I realized that like, I'm not equipped to work for people. It was something that just didn't feel right in my life. Like, man, I just can't do this. So I quit again with no money saved. After how long? This was probably, I, I worked that job for like three, four months. Like... <laughs> I could take it. <laughs> Mind you, I was like, at this point, I'm like, I don't even care about being homeless. I was like, at this point, I just, <laughs> I cannot. Like, <laughs> I know reckless is going to have a good ending. So right. I go and I quit. Mm-hmm. And this time around, I ended up investing in this program. Mm-hmm. Don't want to get a credit to the program right now, um, but the program was $2,000. And the program was like four payments of five fifty. Why? Why don't you want to give credit to the program? Was it... I just don't want to mention it. Is it a janky person? No, it's not a janky person. I just don't want to mention it. <laughs> Look. I got so many questions now. <laughs> I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to leave it alone. But So I take this program. It was like four payments of 550 It was for marketing, learning um, marketing. No, it was like an online marketing program, okay. like how to do business online. And I took that program. And at the time when I quit with no money saved, I was like, my rent was 750 in Memphis. And this program was 550 so I'm already in the hole just by making the first payment. Mm-hmm. It was like four payments of 550 And I was like, that was like my, my only hope. Like, hey, I even asked my husband, like, hey, I'm about to take some of the money we got and buy this course. I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm going to take this money and buy this course. So I bought the course. The course was a little over $2,000. So, well, $2,000, 2100 mm-hmm. or whatever. Whatever, four payments of $550. Mm-hmm. And I take the course, and I get in there, 
and I'm in this Facebook group, and everybody, like, making money claims. And I'm like, Thiefo, lie. Ain't no way in the hell y'all making this kind of money, man. So, like, folks like, oh, man, I, I made... I made a uh, hundred thousand. I had a hundred thousand dollar lunch. I had a two hundred thousand dollar lunch. I had a, you know, I'm just seeing all these numbers. I'm like, default line. Mm. Default's line, line. They line, line. That's I told crazy. you, I'm studying marketing. I'm in this course now. I'm like, I'm ready to put my put my marketing head together and see if this thing works. So don't get you excited. It's just yeah, it's like just, automatically. Just, I can't believe says... it. My brain never. I ain't never seen that much money a day in my life. Mm. Never made that much money. Yeah. At at best, my annual salary wasn't was. It, was a lot lower, so I ain't never made that much right. money. So at the time, I really didn't know, right? So when I um, did the program and started to test out these concepts, I came out with a pro. I came out with a fifteen minute video. It was called. <laughs> it was called Ten Steps to Lunch of the Premium Brand. Because at the time, the only thing I had skill set wise was branding. I knew mm. branding. That's what yeah. we used to do: graphic design, websites. Right. Like, all of these things. So I could teach branding. Because when I got online, I was like, why everybody look janky? Right, like, nobody right, cares right. about their brand. Like, yeah. nobody cares about the logo, the brand colors, nothing. That's why your whole situation be looking so yeah. dope online. Yeah. <laughs> you got background in history in that. Gotcha, Right, gotcha. so I'm like, why is everybody looking janky? So I was like, I wanted to be the person that fixed the, the visuals mm -hmm. to people's brands online. So I created this little 15-minute video. And at the time, I didn't know what I wanted to sell online. Goes mm -hmm. back to the whole, like, purpose, passion. I didn't know. Yeah. I just was like... I just tired of people looking janky, so I'm gonna do this 15-minute video. I put the 15-minute video together, put it out there. And at the time, I wanted to be a course creator. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to do what services. Year is this? this was in 2014. 2014. Yeah. So, Dang, the word course wasn't even invented. Like people wasn't on right, courses yeah. yet. Yeah, I just knew I wanted to be a course creator, right? Because I was sick of service. Mm -hmm. Doing all this graphic design work, working with people, I'm like sick of service at this point. Mm -hmm. Let me try this passive income thing. Right. So I put this 15 minutes. I didn't even video. know what a course was back then in yeah. 2014. <laughs> yeah. I thought courses just came out like 2017. No, bro, you late. <laughs> Like the craze of like course, everybody yeah, for yeah. the last like few no, years, no, right? You, you late, okay. you late. You've been on it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. So in 2014, and now mind you, when I would tell people about this stuff, I would tell people all the time, I discovered online marketing. Mm. And all my peers would be like, bro, what are you talking about? I'm like, people online making a lot of money. It was like the gold rush or something. Right. People wouldn't really believe in me then. Yeah. So I was like, all right, cool. I didn't really believe in myself. So I had to. <laughs> I love the transparency in this conversation. <laughs> so I took the little 15-minute video, put it out there. And at the time, with this 15-minute video, my only goal was to see what to make. It wasn't to make money off of it. It was literally just to build my email list and get market research, like gotcha. data. Like, hey, okay. I'm going to tell you all these 15 steps. And every person who watched the video, I'm going to do a one-on-one -on -one call with them. That was, that, was, that was literally, I didn't even know I was doing a funnel. If that makes sense. Right. And back then, I didn't have a big audience. Mm -hmm. So, like, the 50 people who signed up, 60 people who signed up, I was lit. You called every one of them. I mean, yeah. I brought I let them book a call. So, the funnel was, you watch this 15-minute video, then a little button pop up about 10 minutes into the video. Mm -hmm. Like, this is lead pages right, back, right. back then. And literally, when you click the, the button, it takes you to a survey. And you you get, it basically was like, are you in business or you don't, are you not in business? Right. And people would, you know, pick whichever one. They would fill out my little form at the time. And I let them get on the calendar. And I talked to them. Hmm. And I'm doing all these free calls. I'm like, ask me anything. You know, just trying to test out my skills. So, right. like, ask me anything. So, people on the phone. So, it wasn't me. leading to a sale? It was just... No, I didn't know what to sell. I didn't have no offer, nothing to sell. No course, no nothing. It was literally just, let me get on the phone. Let me... My, my thought process at the time was, let me see what the common issue is. With all these people I get on the phone with. Mm. And that's going to help me create the dream product. Got it. Got right? It. So I'm doing all these calls. And then it was this lady from Singapore who was like, hey, how do I work with you? And I'm scratching my head like, huh? <laughs> I don't know what to sell this wow. lady. <laughs> Yo, that's crazy. I was like, I don't know what to sell this lady. So I was like, I said, give me about a day. And I just made up some stuff. I came up with two packages. I came up with a $5,000 package and a $10,000 package. Where are you getting these numbers from? They was random. <laughs> they was random. You know what? Did you see it in the, in the little, like, court, in the little program? No, the no, no. Literally, all I thought about was, and this is going back to your question earlier, like, what was your relationship with money? Back then, I thought a lot of money meant a lot of stuff. 
You got to do a lot of stuff to make a lot of money. Mm-hmm. So at the time, I, the only skill I had was graphic design and photography. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I'll make these people a website. I showed them how to brand their social media. Uh, blah, 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 blah. So you're still, you're still intertwining like your physical work yes. labor to yeah. do it. So right. you say exactly. $5,000. And do a whole and lot of stuff. Your whole life. <laughs> I'm going to tell, tell you what was in these packages. So if you had this $5,000 package and this $10,000 package, the difference between the two was, I'm going to do your graphics or I'm going to show you how to do your graphics. Mm. That was the big difference in price. Gotcha. And I will meet with you every week for a whole year. For a whole year? Yeah. One-on-one. <laughs> mm. <laughs> But you got to keep in mind, at the time, $5,000, $10,000 yeah, was a lot of money. Absolutely. I thought I was rich. And so... <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> this is so good. This is so, so good. So we go through the packages, right? So I sell. So I, I get back on the phone with her. I'm like, hey, here go the two packages. She was like, I'll do package A. She was like, these are great prices. I'm like, what? Oh, it's on. Oh, like right. I got my first yes. I'm on it. Pop it. So now at this point, I'm ready to tell everybody, hey, I got these design packages. Oh, what you sure. need? I'm your social media branding guru. Like, whatever you need. So I wouldn't even now you're doing. a guru. Yeah, now yeah, you're I'm a guru. Yeah, yeah, I was. You're so one more package. <laughs> and now you're the social media marketing guru. <laughs> this is so funny. I'm just being honest. Yeah, so, I love it. I love it. So when but I, there's, there's yeah, a lesson in it yeah. because, like, you create a package and you sell it. Like, right. that first... Yo, that that first high ticket sale mm-hmm. will really, really set your course to yo. Oh, if one person buys it, that That's means somebody else will buy it. Exactly, and it gives you the confidence mm-hmm. because without that, you might not have had to. Oh, y'all pay. Oh, let's go. Right, <laughs> let's so get I it. I think like the lesson is you gotta just start shoot the shot. Right, shoot and the I shot. didn't know at the time. I just wanted my car no pay. Yeah, I didn't really care. She was like. Cool, let's sign up. And I'm like, bet. Now I know to do all these graphics, I'm about to be out here popping. Mm -hmm. So she paid for the package. It's my first sale. And it was enough money to pay my car note for two months. And like- Did she put like a down payment or a deposit? uh, She put a deposit down. So it was like, she gave me like $9.85, something like that. That was still a lot of money. Mm Because at at that time, I was doing like full-blown branding package for like $250. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, $985 oh, a lot it. of money. You know yeah. what I mean? I'm like, man, baby, we got payments for two months on the car. Like, right. we about to be killing it. And then I would, at this point, I now have something to sell. Mm-hmm. So now I switched up them free calls to like, these going to, I didn't even know they was called sales calls or now discovery calls. Call, yeah. um, even then, I didn't even know I was selling a, a high ticket. Like, everybody like, high, I'm yeah. like, man, I've been doing high ticket. That's what yeah. that is now. Like, right. I've been doing that since 2014. <laughs> like, this is old. Stuff. Right. Uh, but anyway, like I did, I ended up selling those those packages. But like from that call with her, for the rest of those free calls that I had booked, I now had something to offer at the end of the call. Mm-hmm. So I still had the same format. Ask me anything, and if and and I didn't even really pitch them. It was like if they asked me, "What do you got next?" Right. I would tell them about these two packages. Sure. In the first sixty days, I made twenty thousand dollars cash wow. in the bank. Wow. And I ain't know nobody to tell but my husband because I'm like, yeah, somebody gonna rob me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh like, this gosh. is a lot of money. I'm like, ooh, this is a lot of money. And so I'm making the money. I'm like, oh, wow. man. I'm, I'm, now I gotta deliver. And what year is this? 2014. It's still 2014. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, I, made, so I made the money. This That was my first marketing campaign. Mm. I didn't know it, though. Does it make sense? Yeah. I had made the graphics, everything. Like, you see a little fro of me, and I got my little hand up like this, like, hey, free training. Uh, but that was my first campaign at the time, but I didn't know, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then from there, my next campaign come around. So now in this three-part video series, I'm now going to teach you how I made the $20,000. I'm mm-hmm. like, hey, how I made twenty k. That was the name of the, thir- the second campaign. I put that out, and by this time, I didn't put together a group coaching program and everything. Sure. So I'm selling this uh, $2,000 course program at the time, and people began to enroll in that. So I ended up making like $40,000. I'm like, oh, I'm, wow. I, I'm learning the process. Now my marketing is popping at this yes, point. Ma'am. I'm only on my second campaign. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm constantly doing campaign after campaign after campaign, and I realized that I really love to market. Mm. I really love to create dope branding assets, dope branding experiences, and like that kind of really kicked me off to what I'm doing now. Mm. Wow. I mean, okay. it's so much more, but that's pretty sure. much... Long story short here. Absolutely. So, in 2014, <laughs> can you remember how many campaigns you did? Was it just the two? 
Um, in 2014, I probably did three. Mm. But the other one was more so like promo. It was gotcha. called, we did a, a campaign called I'm Tired of Being Broke. Mm. And it was just me and my husband on like on the audio recording just mm. talking about like, hey, we, you know, we tired of being broke. Let me tell you how to have to be broke. Because at this point, we weren't really killing it, but right. we weren't where we was. So gotcha. we wanted to start mentoring and teaching other people. Gotcha. So um, all of these people that you sold in that first year, 2014, did they all enroll on the I'll talk to you every day for a year package? The people, all of those people that I did those initial calls with, yeah. But being mm-hmm. by that time, I started to become more savvy in my offers. Mm-hmm. Like, remember I told you, like, I love helping people develop their product suites yeah. now. I done mastered that. I didn't probably did everything you know not to do. Right. I done made money short, long, sideways. Like, I done learned <laughs> all the ways to not do, right. do that. And so it went from, like, 12 months to six months. Because mm-hmm. now my mind is getting better. Like, oh, well, I don't have to work a whole year. Mm-hmm. To get the same amount of money. Because it's costs tend to tailor off anyway. Like, right. we're talking about the sale. You right. got it. Right. So, I'm doing... I said, okay, I'm going to do six months. Then I'm like, well, can I make $5,000 in 90 days? So, you notice the time keep getting shorter and shorter. Yeah. And then I was like, can I make it in a day? Why do a whole year? What's the point? Same amount of money. Mm. And so, my brain, you know, I kept testing the market. For me, it was like, make the offer. Will people buy it? That's all I need. I only need one person to buy it to confirm that the market wants it. Yeah. And then I can blow up the marketing and go hard with that. So, yeah. I love it. I love it. Okay, so following year, mm-hmm. like, or, you know, time of 15, 16, 17. So what about, about 2015, I made my first six figures online. Mm. So by this time, I'm like, you know, them 5 and 10K packages added up. But I didn't really have a lot of clients because my prices were higher. Mm-hmm. Right? I still was kind of unknown. A lot of people mm-hmm. didn't know who I was. Like, who is this Arjun Richmond chick? You know? And from there, I began to, like, start creating, like, this course called Building Big Brands. So, I created this, this flagship. Building, what? Building Big Brands. Building Big Brands. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. It's, it's, just, it's not a thing anymore, as you can tell. <laughs> but <laughs> Building Big Brands, started promoting that. It was about a 12, it's like a 12-week program. And for me, everybody at this time in the 2015, 2016 uh, space, everybody had a 12-week program. Mm-hmm. If you didn't have a 12-week program that was $2,000, you didn't have a signature program. So me, I was looking at like all of the people at the time who had that that, you know, that format. And so for me, I had the program. I was making money with it. But by the time 2016 came around, even though I was making money, like multiple six figures, I felt like I didn't, like, who is this girl that's selling this program? Like, who is she? I'm sick of being compared to all of these other people. People would compare me to other, like, you know, online marketers at at that time. And they'll be like, hey, you know, what's the difference between your program and this person's program? And people didn't know I was the obvious choice and that would piss me off. Mm. And I'm like, well, is something wrong with my my branding? Is something wrong with how I'm positioning myself in the marketplace? Why don't people know I'm the obvious choice? Like, why do people keep asking me what's the difference? And then once once I decided to take a look back and say, okay, well, what are you doing? Because apparently you're doing something that's real clone. You'll yeah. see how we kind of evolved to unclone. Oh. And so and so I'm like, you you doing something that's super clone, right? And I said, well, what am I doing? I said, well, you got 12 modules. They got 12 modules. Your program is 12 weeks. Their program is 12 weeks. Your program is 2,000. Your program, you know, like, mm, and I just kept, right, and it right. was just like clone, 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 clone. And I said, well, what would you do? If you just, like, forgot everything you learned from all of these gurus at this point gotcha. and, like, had to really kind of go back to the basics, what would you do? I was like, well, I'd be more creative. If you didn't have a roadmap. Yeah, like, if I just, like... knowing the information that you have, just if you were going to create. Right, exactly. So now I'm kind of getting back to my creative yeah. self because at this time, at this point, I had c- completely abandoned my creative background. You know, I was a girl who had an art magazine in Memphis, Super dope photographer, super dope uh, graphic designer. And mm. I wasn't infusing that in my work. Mm. I was looking at people in the marketplace and be like, okay, she take pictures like this. So I'm going to take pictures like this. Oh, she sits in her chair like this. Because this is what the millionaire is doing. This is what the people are doing. But, I mean, at the end, of, so you, you, and it modeled, was working. you modeled what was yeah. working, yeah. Right? right? And it worked. Right, and you. it worked. But I wasn't happy. Mm. Because I got tired of being compared. Like, yeah. I was sick of it. I'm like, man... Why you keep asking me that, bro? Like, that question was like, you know the thing that kept me up at night? Because people were like, oh, man, what's the thing that keep you up at night? It wasn't about money. 
it was the fact that people wouldn't, didn't know I was the obvious choice. Creating and, your own identity in the Yes, because at that time I had an identity crisis. I didn't know who I was. I just knew that I had mastered these things. I had mastered creating courses. I had mastered selling it. But I wasn't happy. What's going on? Listen, entrepreneurs, coaches, service providers, you want to add instant credibility to your brand? Become a published author. People look at you differently, all right? So my brother Ash Cash is giving the game on how to become a self-published author, okay? How to write and publish your own book easily in his new online program. Now, Ash got over 10 years experience. He's been an author for over 10 years, but not only being an author, he sold over 70,000 books and four bestsellers. I mean, featured on every single outlet you can think of without a publicist. That's absolutely amazing. Now, he's got this new program that's gonna teach you everything, everything from writing and publishing your own book in 90 days or less. Imagine if you listened to this 90 days ago. Today, you'd be a published author. Look at that. He's also going to teach you how to be, sell massive books like he's done, okay? All independently, okay? So go to IncomeFromBooks.com. IncomeFromBooks.com. And for a limited time only, you'll get 40% off the normal price. You don't even need a promo code. So go to IncomeFromBooks.com. Build your impact while building your income. Back to the episode. Mission of imposter syndrome, but that, is that it? Um, I don't know what it, I don't know what it is really. No, I, I don't I don't it may not be, I, I just hear it on Clubhouse all the time. Everybody look, create a room. Don't ask me. Shit. I just be like, man, get out your head and get this money. Right. <laughs> That's what I be on. And the conversations be so deep <laughs> on imposter syndrome. I'm like, yo, I don't know. Do right, I got right, it? Right, right. I think I was on the one call and I realized that I had it. Like right. I think I got it too. Right, right. It, well, everybody on stage had it. And I'm right. like, Maybe I do, Maybe but I'm you're like, not even aware of it because you're doing you. Exactly. I'm like, it I ain't got time a, to... Yeah. It didn't become a problem until they start talking. <laughs> then you, you all on Google, what is imposter syndrome? I right. Don't, I don't know. <laughs> like, you don't know you're sick and right. like, somebody tell you, yo, why are you walking like that? You're on the lip. You know that means you got gout. Like, really? Do I? And it drives you crazy. You're like, oh, wow, I got right, gout. Right, anyway, right. okay. Yeah. So, so... You are going through an identity crisis. Right, right. Because you are following success. And right. I guess the confusion is, dang, it's working though. It's working. But it don't feel right. It don't feel right because it was becoming harder to sell my thing. Mm. Like people, I was making money, but I couldn't get past the six figures. I couldn't get past the six figures. People kept comparing me to other people. And people would be like, oh, you're just like such and such. And I hated it. Mm. I hated it. It's just like telling somebody, like, oh, your Android is just like Apple. You go, you can, you, y'all about to fight. It's a big <laughs> right, difference right. between Android and Apple. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So, and that, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't, like, I wasn't like a, a McDonald's and a Burger King. You know, that's a big difference. Yeah. So, if no one really knows the difference, then they just gonna compete on price. They're gonna compete on popularity. Yeah. They're gonna compete on who got the most followers, who got the most popularity, who's in the media the most. But they're not gonna, like, they're not gonna pick me because I'm truly better. You know what I mean? Mm. And so I had to really figure out what is a creative way to, like, find, like, show people that I'm better. Yeah. Like, that's something I really, like, like, sat down and thought about it. So I was like, okay, if you throw out the rule book, throw out all this stuff, you know, but keep what you know about marketing, what would you do differently? So at the time, I created this program called Two Day Site Lunch. It was a program called Adobe Muse. And at the time, everybody was using WordPress, Wix, stuff like that for their mm -hmm. website. Nothing wrong with that, but I wasn't using that. This, and 16, people, this, this is 20, this is still 2016. 16, got you. So I put together this two day workshop and I put it out there. I'm like, hey, I'm about to like, because I talked with a friend girl and she was like, why are you doing this Adobe Muse workshop? Everybody's using. WordPress, everybody's using Wix. And I'm like, aha, I'm finna ah, show you. Everybody about to be using Adobe Muse. I love it. And so I put it out there and I was like, this was the first time that I truly trusted myself. Because normally I would call people and be like, what do you think? And whatever they said, it will be like a sponge and I completely like wouldn't do me. And so this was the first time where, this is somebody I respect. We still cool to this day where I was just like, nah, I'm gonna trust that what I'm trying to do is gonna work. Yo. Sold out in two days, man. Wow. Sold out in two days. And had I went the WordPress route or the Wix route, like, I don't even think this brand Unclone would exist because I'd still be listening to other folks, not trusting myself, not trusting the process. You know what? I think I'm, I think I'm going through that right now. I think mm -hmm. I had that revelation um, maybe a couple weeks ago. So mm -hmm. I, I launched this uh, Creators Bootcamp. And what I'm so used to doing is when I do something, I always involve other people. So it's yes. not even like asking for permission, but if I'm going to do like a workshop or something like mm -hmm. that, I'm going to call the people that's dope in that and say, yo, come on in this workshop. Right. 
But I think you saying it is me not trusting myself. Right. And I didn't realize it until literally I sold out the event by myself before I, because I, I told my designer that I'm not putting any, I'm not going to make a big flyer with a whole bunch of people on it. Right. Because that's my normal thing, mm -hmm. right? Because You're challenging the norms. That's what I mission about. Because <laughs> mm. I feel like I need all these other people yep. to yep. put on an amazing... And I have the information. And this is the last thing. You know Marquel, right? Marquel yes. Russell. Mm -hmm. So, and it shocked me. Just like a few... Not, not shocked me, but um, this is the first time I actually thought about it. He was doing a two-day workshop, and mm -hmm. it's mainly just him teaching. Right. And then he had me come speak, and he was like, listen, y'all, y'all know I don't normally let nobody else talk to my people. Right. But this guy is credible. And I'm like, dang, you do the whole thing by yourself. You know all the aspects of this? Yeah. And the answer is yes. Yes, absolutely. You know what? I'm going to just start doing stuff without having to call people. And I, I don't just, call for permission. It's right. just like, I need your support. It's going to change the game. Like, um, we did our virtual conference, Unclone Con, our first edition in 2018. And I'm only the speaker. And people are like, what? How you have a conference, you're the only speaker? This is crazy. This is an ego thing. No. I legit know all the aspects of what I'm teaching. I don't really need somebody to come in and speak on a topic. I've already read the book, mastered it, tried it, tell you how it went bad, the whole nine. So I don't really need extra people. That's a bonus at this point. <laughs> I, didn't tr I don't trust myself. You know, you're coming into yourself. I'm coming into myself. Right? Yes. Yeah, this is a therapy set. I'm supposed to interview you. And, he, and I'm getting therapy. This is good. This is so good. Okay. All right. So, um... I forgot where we are. Okay, you you're, you're doing... Yes, you're yeah. doing a workshop. So I'm doing a workshop, put it out there, and it's a hit. And I'm like, okay, let me try something else. So I create something else. And it just started working. Like, I noticed that I became more confident. I stopped calling my peers and asking them what they think. And I began to start creating some of the most epic stuff that you don't really see online. And at that point, I'm the obvious choice now. Because I'm doing things different. I'm moving different. Even to this day, um, people be like, you mean to tell me you charging that for five days and people paying it? I'm like, yeah. Well, mm. everybody else do this. I'm not everybody else, bro. Mm. I, I just, and that's really what my whole brain is about. It's like really getting people to a place to like trust themselves. So like, so after, so after 2016, um, I published my first book, Are You Ready for the Yes? That came out in January 2017. And um, in July, I came out with my second book, which was Unclone Life. Two books back to back. And Unclone Life was like, I guess you can say, was my own personal. It was really for me. The book was for me, yeah. but I just shared it with the world. Yeah. And it was, it was, it's called uh, Unclone Life: Seven, Seven Epic Unrules for Owning Your Shit. And the book is about these seven things I had to unlearn to become who I was at the time. Because when 2017 popped off, people was like, "Bro, you moving different." Like, mm. like, what is it? They could tell, like, they could tell there was like this aura around me that was different, right? And after that, we began to start this whole brand called Unclone. Mm. And so how Unclone came about, I was on a live stream on Periscope and somebody came into the, to the live stream and was like, man, you so Unclone. I'm like, I am Unclone. <laughs> and I took it and ran with it. When he got a trademark, the whole nine, like really starting this whole movie because at it, it, it first Unclone was a hashtag. So whenever I would do something different, I put hashtag unclone. And it kind of started off to that. And then it morphed into this whole big movement. And I had to give unclone meeting. It couldn't just be a hashtag anymore. If you want people to follow it, um, be a part of this movement or something, it has to like stand for something. Mm -hmm. So unclone means to challenge the norms and be the first to do it first. And a lot of the times people kind of get stuck at the challenge the norms piece mm -hmm. because we're taught to like, Follow, you know, if the wheel, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know, don't reinvent the wheel. I think we should reinvent the wheel. I think we should have fun reinventing the wheel. I think we should have fun putting our own color and flavor on the wheel. Who said we had to do the wheel like that? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Dang, this is, yo, I'm really having a um, a real revelation right now. Yo, you know, like when Clubhouse first started, uh, when, we, when we first got on to Clubhouse, right. it was like, I have a, like a group chat. And I'm like, yo, y'all want to do a room? Mm -hmm. And like, I I need the validation. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean, I need the I need the support. Right. But then I just got to a point where I'm just gonna start a room and we'll see what happens. And they start to pop, right? Cause you so, popping, man. 
I be in your room. Your rooms be lit. This is exciting. You be starting some I'm really having, dope conversations too. I'm Stuff having, we need to be talking about. I'm having a breakthrough right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are watching me have a whole breakthrough. Yes. Okay, all right. So, so that's 2017. You start right. doing your own thing. Right. So, so that's, when the, that's when the Unclone brand popped off everything in 2017. Mm, so where did you start taking it, if you remember 18, 19? I think 2017, I knew that the brand needed an identity. Mm -hmm. So there's a... I didn't show my logo. Can I show my logo to people? Yeah. Okay, so it's on the back of my hoodie. And basically... Girl, we can't see that in oh. the camera. Well, look, okay, just go to our page. Okay, it's on the back of my hoodie. Uh, okay, let me see. Uh, they can kind of see it, yeah. But okay. the audio, I'm sorry yeah, for so viewers listening to the audio. <laughs> <laughs> you're real, my bad, y'all. So to it's a, um, it's basically a sheep, <laughs> and the eyes are crossed out. Mm -hmm. And um, I hired my friend girl Rochelle. She she did the 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 logo, and when she did the logo, she sent it to me. I'm like, what is this? Why you send me this? Like, let's try again. You know, I'm a branding person myself, so I'm like, yeah. nah. And then when she broke down, like, what it meant, she was like, you know, did you, she said, did you, do you know the first animal that was cloned? I said, no. She oh, was like, she. she was like, Dolly the sheep? And I was like, and she said, I removed the eyes and put X's to represent we on clone. We be ourselves. And like, that's what Ooh. like, like, I like, want a hoodie. Yes. I want a hoodie. That's hard. Yes. And so, once we started telling people the story, it, people was like, you know, it, it, people started, just like you just had this big aha moment, a lot of people had this, like, big aha moment. And it was this whole concept of, like, so I haven't been crazy all this time. Mm -hmm. When I when I, when I I thought about doing this, I really went off. Yeah. I was following myself. I was doing me. Yeah. And, like, to see people, like, kind of, like, people would cry when they would read Unclone Life. Because they mm. would look like, man, I really... Thought I was crazy all this time. I thought I had to get approval from everybody. I thought, like, oh, me wanting to do 15 different things, I ain't crazy. Because yeah. everybody come to me once they coach and told them they need the niche. And I always tell people, like, I'm the coach that lets you do the most. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> There's something, okay, we got, we got to talk about it. Yeah, we got to talk, we'll talk, talk about it. We'll talk about it. Okay, so <laughs> I think, it, you know what? I think in phases, yes, that's important because. Yeah. People don't give themselves enough time to even master something. Yeah. So you don't believe that? No, I'm not saying that. Mm. I, I believe that you can be multi-passionate and do multiple things, but you do got to know how to focus and close the gap and then start again. Mm. Most people are trying to start everything at one time, and then that's when you get chaos, and then that's when you see people in the program saying, I'm, I'm a, I sell socks, water, right, 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 coaching, right. consultant. Right. I'm a wrestler. I'm like, bro. <laughs> like, we start wrestling, man. <laughs> so you said, focus, close the gap, and start over. Yes. Break that down. So, for instance, let's say um, you want to sell, you know, hoodies and soft boxes, mm. as an example. Don't start them at the same time. They don't even go together. Mm. Like, start the hoodie thing. Like, really put the marketing and branding behind it. Like, really grow it, end it, and then start the next thing. But don't be trying to do both of them at the same time because what the issue is, most people don't have the capacity to do too exactly. many things at the same time. That's one of the reasons why you don't need to be doing too exactly. much. Like, yeah. now, if you if 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 I say, hey, hey David, like, oh, I, I got somebody on my team who can manage the softbox business. They know how to brand. They know how to market. Then you got a whole cool product development team over here. Mm -hmm. Now, if you got multiple product development teams, then you can launch multiple products. But gotcha. because it's only you, you only have so much capacity as one person. That's why you're saying focus, close right. the gap in terms of like create a system where right. exactly. it's running. And then, yeah. And you start over. Yeah. You can start something else yeah. in the same process. Right. Now, you know, you still got to have order. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a big systems person. So like really putting systems and processes in place, launch, close, start over. Mm, that's good. That's yeah. good. I would, and now that I think about, it, I would expect you to. If everybody said focus, you're like, nah, you ain't got to. You good? Come over here. <laughs> Let me show you how to be unclothed. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> nah I ain't but, say be crazy. Right, 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 for sure, for sure. Yeah. But uh, that's a, that's a really good perspective because um, even you know, as a coach, sometimes you're you're telling somebody to like to to lock in and only do one thing. And what can set in is a feeling of, um, I'm not going to be able to freely do, be do who this. I am. But you know what? Okay, so when you say lock in and do one thing, what you what that, what is happening, because I'm a creative, like what happens in your brain is that I can't do other things. 
Right. And I gotta we pick don't explain one. that. Yeah. And nobody really goes into why I'm asking you to do this one thing. Mm -hmm. What people should be saying is, hey, I know you got all this stuff you want to do. Which one you really want to do right now? We're not saying you're going you're gonna to be able to do the other things, but what's the one you really want to do right now? Mm -hmm. And like help them make the decision to get them to the one thing that's going to set them up to free them up to do the other things. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Which is why understanding marketing is so important. Exactly. Because if you when, get it together yeah. and understand how to launch it, you can use the same you can formula. Do it, that's what I tell people. When you master marketing, you'll never be broke a day in your life. Mm. Period. It's not, it, actually, I'm mad that I don't have enough time because I'm just like, man, I need to go back and revitalize the juicing business because now we know marketing. Yeah. Let's do the magazine again. Let's pop up a photography studio. Oh like, God. like, like sure. I know the stuff now. Back yeah. then, I didn't know. So, mm. yeah. Okay, let's let, let, let's go through some some coaching yeah. in terms of taking a product. Right. So I have a t-shirt brand. Mm -hmm. Right. So actually. Okay, I'll get some. I'll get some free coaching real quick. <laughs> I'm so selfish on this podcast. So I have I have a brand mm -hmm. that um it does well when I'm selling it, mm -hmm. right? But I don't have the time to focus on it. Right. So me and my friend, my best friend, um, he he was like, "Yo, man, I want to do something in the entrepreneurial space." I'm like, "All right, cool. Let's build this brand together." Mm -hmm. What should we do? We have a website. Do you have a marketing plan? No. Let's go back to that part. Okay, let's go. A lot of people skip the marketing plan. That's why with my, my most recent book. Um, the reason that people uh, skip the marketing plan because they think the idea is enough. The mm. idea enough. The idea by itself ain't nothing. You know, even if it even if it's in the world, because mm. people be like, oh, I went to the I went to China and got all of these this these inventory. I'm on it popping. Everybody, all of the money should just be rolling in. Right. I'm like, nah, dog. Right. No, nah, it doesn't <laughs> right, work like right, that. Right. <laughs> so the first thing I would tell people is to create their marketing plan. Like, how do you actually plan to roll out? I feel like a lot of times when people roll stuff out, they do a poor rollout. Yeah. And it's kind, of, it's kind of like, oh, I got this flyer. Let me just post it on social media. That's mm -hmm. enough. And then they get mad because they don't get no sales. You ain't like tell people it was coming. Right. You ain't get them excited. You ain't do nothing. Like think about all of the pre promotion that the Super Bowl do before the Super Bowl actually happened. Yeah. If we would take that same amount of energy into our stuff before it actually comes out, man, we'd be out here killing it. Do you mm. hear me? We would be killing it. Give me an idea of a marketing plan. Mm -hmm. give, me a, give me a rollout of you know maybe something a client or whatever, even a hypothetical. Um, I can, I can use one of my clients. So I have a client. Her name is Dr. Ebony. She came out with my therapy cards. And essentially, when she came to me, it was just idea. She reached out to me. She was like, hey, I want to coach with you. I have some ideas. She, she made a list of all the stuff that she wanted me to help her with. I'm like, what you need help with? It always started with an idea. Somebody mm -hmm. reached out. I got an idea for this. I'm like, all right, bet. Yeah. What's the idea? She told me the idea. And I'm like, okay, cool. So she's going through her, her thing. I'm like, I can help you with that. One thing I don't do, I don't touch stuff on, I'm not passionate about or I know I can't help you with. Good, good, you know what good. I mean? So she's telling me all of the stuff she wants and she said, I want to do my therapy cards. And I did. when she told me that at that time, I knew it was going to be a hit. Cause That's at, hard. Yeah, because at the time, there was no therapist who were making tools mm -hmm. for people at home. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Wow. So this, When was this? When was this? This was so, we are in, she became a client. This was like 2019. Okay. 2019 gotcha. when she became a client, but gotcha. she launched it in 2020. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, so we did a VIP day. We <coughs> planned out her lunch. This is where we're going to go to get the card decks. This is where we're going to go get it printed it. This is, you know, let's come up with the revenue goals. Let's talk about promotion. Let's think about content. Like, we literally mapped out everything. And what I always teach people is, like, the best validation is cash. A lot of times people think that the idea is just enough. And so I was like, this is what we're going to do. We're going to roll it out. And when you put it out there... I only want you to buy some samples. Don't buy, don't go buy no whole palette of nothing. Mm -hmm. Just buy like three to four samples. That's good. Get it shipped in. And what you're gonna do at this time, so like let me let me go back. So when we did the VIP day, she went, she had the plan, and she wanted coaching around the execution. Cause I just help people with the plan. And so they can either put a team in place or I can tell them like who to hire to go mm -hmm. actually get it done. Gotcha. But I kind of just focus mainly on strategy. So she became a mastermind client. And when she became a mastermind client, uh, we started to develop the card deck. So, like, what it was going to look like, what the branding was going to look like, what the visual was going to look like, you know. 
That's my specialty. What's their Instagram? Because I want to see it. Dr. Ebony. Okay. All right, go ahead. Dr. Pro, pro, Dr. Pro, Dr. Ebony online. Proceed for all the people yeah. that's listening and yeah. don't want to. Yeah. Like, yeah. They would be doing the yeah. most in the interview. I want to know right now. Yeah, so Dr. Ebony online. Okay. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. And we'll um, literally, uh, we ended up like doing all of the branding, going back and forth. What was the, what was the shipping box going to look like? What was this going to look like? And she ended up ordering the samples. Okay, and Dr. Ebony online. with an I or? Uh, E-B-O-N-Y. E-B-O-N-Y. Dr. Ebony online. Dr. Ebony online. Okay, yeah. I got you. Yeah. And so when she um, put it out there on her birthday. Yo, May, I have these cards in my house. For real? My wife has these cards. <laughs> That's my client. Or did she? It's just my therapy cards, right? Yeah, not, my uh, therapy cards. She don't yeah. have no other type of cards, right? Uh, she got two dicks. She, got a, she now has the adult the team, and then she just released a journal. What's the other name of the cards? They're um, all therapy they cards, all, right? They all call my therapy cards. Let me see what you're doing. I feel like maybe I bought those. Yeah, that's her. I think maybe I bought them or my wife bought them, but I have these at my house. Yeah. Dang, you done marketed to me. <laughs> <laughs> you got me. Yeah. <laughs> That's all right. Okay, that's so I like when she the, came the to me, it, it was just crazy. a it was just an idea, and so she ended up getting a few of them for her birthday. Her birthday was in May. She posted it online. It was just a simple post. Hey, y'all, I got my new product. It's my birthday. You know, if y'all want it, go pre order it. How about mm. we had projected to make like we was like, oh, she was like, oh, I'd be happy if I do five k. You know, a small number. She just wanted to know. How much were the cards? They sell for fifty dollars. So she was like. We'll just see. We put it out there and see if it works. And literally, she ended up doing that in the first hour. Mm. Like, it took off. I'm talking about it took off. To date, um, at the time of this recording, she has done over $300,000 since May. Wow. On them cards. So May of 2020. 2020. 2020. So May 2020 to now, right? 300 k and that's And now she got a whole suite of products now. She got the adult version. She got a teen version. And then she got the journal. Okay, walk me back on the marketing. Yeah. Okay, we... Come together, we... So she put it out. She puts out the, the mock-up. And what I do is... So I hold on, hold on. Okay, yeah. take me back before yeah. that. Okay, okay. So we come up with a marketing plan. Right. Right? So what is the plan? Before anything comes so in out... The plan, so in the plan, we need to know who we're targeting, okay. who we're marketing to, uh, what are our promo dates, when we're going to launch and, and end it, right. um, what's the idea, what's the vision, what are our metrics of success, what are our before numbers, what are the numbers we want to be at when we get done. Um, we we also make a list of all the things we want to track. So, like, what's going to be our measure of success that's going to allow us to go put more money into the concept? Mm. Because at the, because I take my clients through this process called Beta Profits. Mm -hmm. And Beta Profits is where you, you do just enough to get the money. That's essentially, like, what is the, like, for instance, if you want to sell this hoodie, you don't really need a whole warehouse of hoodies. You just need what you got on. Right. Like, oh, I want what they, they, right, they, right, they right. even got. Like, oh, snap, let me go get it. Go to sleepersforsuckers.com and get this 40 acres in the mill hoodie, okay? You just go and saying? pick that up quick little commercial. <laughs> you know what I'm it. saying? So, at that time, she, I just told her, like, hey, we don't really know if this thing gonna pop off. This is some, and this is another thing. It's kind of like where idea and vision meet, meet reality. To her, it was just an idea and a vision. And then I'm like, cool. And I'm a, I'm the money I'm the money person like cool that's good but mm. let's make some money yeah this. for sure <laughs> and so when she put it out there again the goal was only to make like five thousand dollars so like doing our marketing plan the goal was like we're gonna do some testing let, we're gonna order the cards let people go through it and so she did a lot of like uh what do you call it like when you do feedback with people get feedback so she got the cards I mean mm. she got like the the um like the PDF mm. met with some other therapists and they like like went through it and like oh what about this blah 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 mm. so on and so forth so like we don't skip none of those steps we just not finna be so invested on the inventory side that we kind of stuck with all this stuff and we ain't and got nothing to sell that's where people get it messed yes. up because they're yeah. like yo the idea is amazing amazing let's get they go two thousand boxes right. and then you realize you had the house not as effective five years with something you can't sell and mm. now you got to throw it in the trash mm. Or sell it for Dang, little or nothing. Good. So so the concept is, when I teach this process, is that you get your mock-up. So her mock-up was the the samples. She only needed one. Yeah. Hey, I got this card deck, blah, blah, blah. We helped, you know, come up with the product description, the sales copy, all that stuff. We put it on social media. And we had a testing period. Okay, we're going to we're gonna do, in her case, we're only going to do pre-order for like, I think, two weeks, mm -hmm. two or three weeks. 
And then after we do pre-order, let's just see where we are. Yeah. At this point, she had to order a whole pallet of cards because she didn't even know she was going to sell this much. I didn't uh, even know she was going to sell this much. It literally took off. But it was that initial process of us doing that strategy day, us creating a plan, her getting a mock-up, her sharing it with her community, and letting sales validate if you should go further or not. Mm, I like that. So what was the messaging? The messaging was more so around like, hey, you know, I know some people can't, you know, get to therapy or maybe don't know if they should go to therapy. Here goes some cards using her framework. So I help my clients develop IP too, right? I'm not an IP attorney, but I do feel like like if you really want to like pop off and like get known for something, you got to develop your IP. This is your copyrights, your trademarks, your your signature framework. IP, for intellectual how you property for those that yeah. don't yeah. know. So like her framework, she has a framework for how she worked with her clients. And she literally took that framework and put it into a card deck. And like, the, when you get the card deck, it separate. Like, when you open it up on the intro card, mm-hmm. it shows her framework for, like, how to deal with your issues wow. and stuff like that. And, like, now that same card deck can be a workshop. It can be an event, whatever, because the IP still stays the same. Mm, yeah. That is dope. Yeah. That is, <laughs> and she was just one of those clients where I just have a great idea. Yeah. But, you, like, she needed you to help think through the, how the logistics, we get it to how we're going to put it out there the whole nine. So gotcha. typically, I tell people like, come to me when you when you're when you have an idea or you thinking about doing something. Because if you come to me too late, yeah. yeah. Do you have any uh, marketing campaigns that didn't work? Yes. Tell me, tell me, <laughs> tell me. See, I, I don't want everybody to think it's all like it's you all, got. All right, it's, it's, right, it right. takes work, right? So, so I had did this um, marketing campaign. It was called Three Day Year. Come over a little bit. Oh yeah. I was doing this uh, marketing campaign. It was called uh, Three Day Year. Mm-hmm. I just knew that it was going to pop off. And I realized that I was talking over people's head. The information was too deep. Mm-hmm. So it was like a three, it was a three part video series where I teach people how to like, um, where I teach people how to build out their annual plan in three days. Mm-hmm. And it was, it was too much for people. I was like, dang, man. Too much for y'all. <laughs> wow. And I didn't get the enrollments that because I was using that to get people into my marketing membership at the time. Mm. And it, it flopped. It didn't do that well. Mm. We got a lot of leads. We got a lot of people to, to opt in, but the sales weren't there. Did did you have some people that And I did all or? of the stuff. All the stuff right. I just told you. Some stuff just ain't going to hit. Yeah. And some people don't know when to quit. And you got to be okay with that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You got to be okay yeah. with that. And like yeah. you said, you got to know when to quit. Like, yo, this... This didn't work. Let's go back and retool. And then sometimes, but that doesn't mean, yeah. like, go do something totally different. No, it means try a different way. Right. I could have went back and reapproached that and said, well, maybe I should do um, a challenge. Or maybe I should try doing a couple live streams. Like, you got to know when to switch up like, the strategy. Like, let people taste test yeah. this information mm-hmm. and get yeah. them to understand it. Yeah. Mm, this is good. <laughs> You're brilliant, man. Yeah. <laughs> so is your model now, do you take on personal clients now? Right now I'm phasing out of one-on-ones. Like I do VIP days with clients where it's a very similar to what she went through where we mm-hmm. strategize on your whatever you want to launch. And then I work with you and your team to actually launch it. Got you. Yeah. But most of it, you've been able to effectively package this into... So my book is probably as close as to a VIP that you... VIP that you would get with me. Mm -hmm. And then from there, um, we do have a marketing accelerator because sometimes, you know, marketing is really the last thing once -hmm. you come up with your idea and vision and stuff like that. And so oftentimes, people would try to market before they even establish themselves. Mm -hmm. And so we had to, like, we created a program where we help people, like, develop their personal brand. We help them develop, like, what they're going to actually sell. And then we go into the marketing campaigns. Because yeah. people trying to go straight into campaign mode and they only got five followers. Right. Like, no, right. you got to build your audience. You got to get known for something. Like, people need to know who you are. Mm. Like, you got to establish yourself. You can't just come out the gate like, yeah, I'm going to be me. Right, right. Unless you got hella network. Right. You know what I'm saying? For you sure, got some dope sure, people that's going to help sure. you push it out. So, yeah. What is your strategy on Clubhouse? I would like to I know. I love Clubhouse. I, 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 and here's the thing. <laughs> yeah. We are, for one, I can't stay too long. Everybody be laughing at me because I, I'm going to start the room and I'm out after a while. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but, but what do you see for Clubhouse right now? It's, it's for me personally as a woman, I love it because I ain't got to comb my hair. I ain't got to put no makeup on. <laughs> I could just be at the house like, hey, everybody, what's going right, on? Right. So for me, you know, I love it. What I love about it is it's giving voice to people who have been afraid. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, they were afraid of live streaming. They were afraid of YouTubing. They were afraid of doing things. 
And Clubhouse allows them to accelerate themselves through their expertise and not what they look like, yeah. not what kind of car they drive. Like a lot of stuff we normally see on Instagram or YouTube, it's not, you can't like, you can't judge a profile picture on Clubhouse. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, you can only sure. go off what they're saying. Yeah. And so, like, they legit, yeah, I'm going to follow you. If you're not legit, I'm not following you. And so, the people who are truly adding substance are growing really, really fast. Yeah. And the people who are not adding substance, then, you know, hey, you're not getting the followers. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> what, is your, what is your marketing strategy? Have you figured it out yet? Or are you just Right now, I kind of just jumped in, but I, I treat it like a marketing campaign. I'm going to mm. do a room. I treat my rooms like webinars. Mm. So, if you're very familiar with doing webinars, it's pretty much like a title, intro, content, call to action. Title, intro, intro, content, content, call to action. Okay, I got to process that. So title, that's yeah. the first thing you think of. Yeah. Then intro, where you're... But I'm introducing myself. Introducing yourself and, and the And idea. how to engage with the room. So in the, it's a lot happening in the intro. In the intro, it's me, who am I, why I'm doing this particular room. And then from there, um, after, after I introduce myself, I'm like, hey, here's a coupon code for the room today. Like, go to mm. my site put in coupon code, blah, blah, blah. That's if I want to sell something. Because sometimes I don't want to sell nothing in the rooms. Um, but if I am going to sell something, I'm giving them a coupon code. I'm going to tell them how to get on my text mobile club. And I'm going to tell them how to engage with me on social media. Then I go into my content. And then I bring it up. I forgot Q&A. Bring All them right. up for Q&A. And then I get everybody moving back to the audience. And then I do my call to action. And I Thanos the room. So it's Thanos. Thanos. Yeah. What? Okay. So... But sometimes you're just in the rooms. Yeah. And you're just like getting Being me. Game. And that's, <laughs> is that a part of your your My branding? strategy? Yeah. yeah, because I, I go into rooms where I know I can add value. Mm -hmm. If I can't add value, I'm not in your rooms. Yeah. I, I like to be a Do you a go to person. rooms and listen or are you just, yeah, you know, if, if I'm No, stage, I, I'm there's still... some rooms I go and listen to. I kind mm -hmm. of be more, I'm more of a list. There are rooms where I'm in business rooms where I'm like, man, I don't know nothing about this. I want to listen and folks see me like, my right, right. Up. Ah, like, right, okay. right. But for the most part, if I don't want to come on stage, I'll just hit the dismiss button. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. You know, it's so dope that I um it's like the early adopters you can see, like really where I am an early adopter. That's you and why I both. You, I'm, I've been going ham on Clubhouse. I'm trying to get on there more because I understand that once it uh, opens all the way up, mm -hmm. there's going to be a group of people, every social networking. When it comes out, mm -hmm. there's like, you got these stars or celebrities who have all the followers. Right. So like me and Justin, we in a chat and he'll send me a screenshot of his numbers. <laughs> that, but he be in there lit. Like he's, he's just, he just be in there more yeah. than me. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so um, last thing. Why do people come, it, well, is marketing complicated? Yeah. It is. I ain't even going to sit here and be like, oh, no, it's awesome, though. No. Because it keeps changing. Mm. Think about it. Clubhouse just came out. Yeah. Now you're thinking, like, how do I put Clubhouse into my marketing mix? Oh, this new Twitter thing came out. How do I put that in my mix? Oh, people said I have the YouTube and, and, and Instagram and Facebook and IG Live and Facebook Live and influencer marketing and brand ambassadors. and yeah. It's like so many things you can do. And... I always tell people, if you knew the marketing, do like two to three strategies. Mm. Don't try to do too much. And then you will notice like well, my most recent book launch was probably my best marketing campaign ever. Mm. Like I got featured in Forbes behind it. Like wow. it was so dope. Um, and my book launch did really, really well because this is when I decided to like unlearn all the stuff I had known mm. myself personally. Yeah. And was like, do the marketing campaign that you wish publishers would do with their mm. authors. And I went. Oh, <laughs> went oh. crazy. What'd you do? Man, we did mystery boxes. We did multiple, we did multiple color co uh, copies. We did a virtual shipping party. We did, um, during the whole pre-order phase, we had a party inside the Facebook group. Every day there was like an activity or an event. We brought in guest speakers. Like, ain't nobody lunch book like we did with the wow. Unclone Marketing book. Plus the book called Unclone Marketing. I can't come out the game the like... Box. Hello, guys. Put right. my book like that. <laughs> you do a lot of um, uh, ads? Uh, no. Like, you do my Facebook ads? Yeah. yeah. But we didn't do any. We, we, did, we did a very small... We didn't really... We did like 20K on the, on the ad campaign for the book. Mm. But the book pretty much ain't, like, stopped selling since July. Is 20K not a good amount of money for an ad? No. Group? No. I actually be like, I need to spend more. What do you average, to this date, what do you average in your ad spend? Um, like when I do ads, I get a pretty good, 
Cause no, my, I'm talking about like, is it a like a monthly thing you're always spending no, on? No, no, no. Like I only spend a lot of money. I'm I just hired an ads agency. Mm-hmm. And so we are gonna have like a dedicated marketing budget each month. But really I only go hard on ads when I was doing marketing campaigns. So I'll take all that money, put it into the campaign, but I don't have like any evergreen ads going, my content substance for that. Now, for some people who don't mm-hmm. want to be creating content, they're gonna go the whole ad route, the evergreen ad route. So right. yeah. So a lot of a lot of what you do is like just organic, cool yeah. stuff yeah. without the without the, the without it. all of the rules. Yeah. You know, people be like, "Oh, you got to post three times a week, and you got to." I'm like, "Man, I'm gonna post when I feel like." <laughs> That's just I'm just it. I'm just being watching because I, I, I just want to take the pressure off of being consistent mm-hmm. and showing up. Like I, you know, if I had to give people a strategy, just be consistent. Mm-hmm. Show up. I need to know you exist, mm-hmm. and showing up ain't like. Once a week, it just not. Yeah, oh, I love it. I love the way you just carry it. And plus, you popped your collar probably ten times during the episode. She <laughs> wow, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, <laughs> I even make a sound effect every time you do it. Wow. <laughs> All right. So, COVID. Mm-hmm. How did marketing change the COVID? Or Man, did it? it didn't. It went up. Like we did. Like my business crossed a million from when we started the business in twenty. 14, 15. Mm-hmm. So from 2015, 14, 15 to 2020, our business crossed a million. But just last year, we was close to 900,000. Mm-hmm. And that's from the crib. Really, I didn't go out and speak at all. Didn't do no, obviously nobody probably went out. Right. But a lot of the stuff I did was virtual. Um, I introduced a lot of new digital products and the book launch. That mm-hmm. was pretty much it. That's all we really did last year. That's dope. And then we was obviously closing out of our mastermind. So, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. This was an amazing interview. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. Did I you had enjoy a therapy it? session. I learned marketing. <laughs> I learned to trust myself. Um, what else did I learn? I learned <laughs> that you have to have a marketing strategy, not yes. just a really good idea. Yeah. I learned a whole, whole lot. This is awesome. Okay, I got I do have another question. Okay, before I get there, let me do a commercial. And then we're gonna come back. Okay, because I gotta tell people about this program, this morning meetup that is absolutely amazing. That yes. I need you on. Okay. Yes. So um Okay, so get some deep stuff together on a deep close. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> <Get deep. laughs> all right, cool. So um, this episode is always sponsored by The Morning Meetup, themorningmeetup.com, themorningmeetup.com. It's the only community that gathers every single day, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for the betterment of the entrepreneurial community, okay? So there is no other place where entrepreneurs gather, literally hundreds of entrepreneurs gather every single morning to learn how to take their business to the next level, how to network with other people. Um, Literally, they're coming from all across the country and they start getting together and they start building businesses together and partnerships and they go live together and accountability part. It is an amazing, it's an amazing community. I know. Your, your, your squad on Clubhouse, they fierce. Oh, we be in that thing. So listen, <laughs> I need you to go to themorningmeetup.com and enroll right now, okay? And I'm gonna do something special because you're listening. You can enroll for $1, okay? $1, Try it out for a week. It's $79 a month, which is less than the cup of a, a price of a cup of coffee every single day. But for $1, you could taste test it, okay? Just see if you like the community for a whole week. Man, $1? I'm going to teach and coach ah. you for seven, well, seven days, actually five, you get five days. Yeah. But seven, it's a seven-day trial, um, and you are going to get the game for $1. If you don't like what I have to say or it doesn't help them, they could just leave. There's no contracts, no obligations. No obligations. Come and go as you please, okay? Um, but if you like it, stick around. You will grow. We have a book club where we read a book every single month. And every day, in the beginning of the call, we go over what we read last night. It's an amazing program. So go to themorningmeetup.com, 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 and enroll today, and I'll see you in the morning. Audrey, I've got a question for you. Yes. I like to make predictions on this podcast. Yes. And um, I like to know where you see yourself in the next five to ten years so that I can look back at this video mm-hmm. and say, yo, you know what? Audrey said she was going to do it. Look, she's actually doing it. She predicted it. So so you, I would say the next five years, you will see my IP all around the world. You will know what Unclone is. You'll know the brand. And you will also be seeing Unclone Marketing Pros around the world. I'll be training people mm. on how to do marketing campaigns. Unclone Marketing Pros. What do yes. you mean? So, like, I'm going to be certifying people in my process on how to create mm. marketing campaigns. I feel like I need to get certified for some reason. Get certified? I need Look, to get cer- Pops color uh, again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. Um, okay. Unclone certified. I want to be an unclone certified pro. You want to be an unclone marketing pro? It. 
I like that. Okay, okay. So household <laughs> name all across the country, and you'll be raising up little Audrey's. Yes, pretty much. And, so you know, you I think. definitely want to be able to create more entrepreneurial tools and marketing tools because mm. I want people, I want to take the stress out of building a business. Mm. Good, good, good. Okay. Anything in that five, 10 years for you and the spouse? Uh, hopefully, we'll have our mansion. <laughs> The mansion. Yes. Ooh. Do you already know what it looks like? Man, we already been looking at the photos. <laughs> Look, just know it's going to have a movie theater. We love the movies. Ooh, yeah. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Dang, that's crazy. You're really going to watch this later. Like, Y'all, I remember we talked about it. Look at I'm me. Gonna... <laughs> I see. Yo, that calorie getting popped on a regular basis. All right, cool. So, um... Thank you. You're welcome. So Thank you much. for having me, man. I really appreciate the opportunity. Oh, this was awesome. Yeah. This was an awesome interview. And it only really feel like it wasn't like an interview. It was like I, I got to steal some information from you. Yeah, in front it's of all people. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I need help. Okay. I yeah. need help. We all should be learning. Absolutely. Yeah. 100 percent And I, I really did learn a whole lot today, especially the difference between like branding and marketing. Branding is the way things look. Marketing is getting that thing that looks good out to the marketplace. Yes. And it is complex. Yes. It is complex. Yes. Do you have any any uh, anything to offer the people? Yeah, I have my book, Unclone Marketing. Good. Um, yeah, I can grab it at... Can I have a discount for my people? Yeah, man. You know, social proof. Use social proof at checkout. That is. Okay, yes. I'll be trying. I'll be trying to look out. Okay, so they use social proof at checkout and they'll be able to get a discount. Save some money. Save. Some money. Just Save know it's going to be cheaper than what it is. Mm. Mm. I like that. I like it. It's like a surprise. <laughs> That's cool. You know, normally people are like, yo, we're going to give a percentage. No, it's, it's going to be a surprise. It's marketing, baby. I'm clone. We got to get you to the site. Okay, I need to. I'm too cloned out here. <laughs> I am way too cloned. You heard what you said? Other people. Oh, my Come gosh. Come on, man. I love it. I love it. Okay. All right, cool. So go to the, I'll, I'll put the book in the, the link below and just make sure you use social proof and you'll get a special discount. Um, again, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Keep servicing the people. Keep um, keep being like the front runner for little black girls with curly hair and just walking into <laughs> their own and just popping their collar and walking <laughs> and then walking with another confidence. But it, it is it's just so beautiful to see um, people from our community go give. Like, yes. And I see on Clubhouse, you give and give and give and give. And it's not about buy my book or buy my pro. It's literally give, give, give. And you got the receipts to show it. So thank you. Thank okay. you. All right, close this out with something deep, man, so we can get out of here. <sighs> I want you all to trust yourself. I truly believe that when you begin to trust yourself, things will change in your life. Quit asking for people's opinion and quit seeking validation. Mm, you spoke right to me. Ah, oh, golly. Thank you so much. We can't close it out no stronger than that, okay? Um, listen, go get you some social proof, meaning go build something, okay? Be proficient at it. Study how you did it. And I want you to go out and teach other people how you did it, okay? It is an obligation. It's a responsibility to teach other people how you did it, okay? So go get you some social proof. We are out of here. All right, look, I know you're enjoying the episode, but I got to tell you, finally, you asked for it, and we created a Patreon, okay? We created an inner circle, we have amazing stories, amazing information, the how-tos from the episodes. The only thing we're missing is a community. So it's about that time. We put together a Patreon. We put together a community because we have to have conversation around the information. So even this podcast that we're listening to right now, there needs to be conversation. I want to hear what you got. I want to hear what you got. Like, let's throw some stuff back and forth. And because we're like-minded, we're all going in the same direction. When we connect, connect in a community, we can connect on other stuff outside the community because we're building real relationships. Okay. So check out the Patreon. We got three tiers. I don't care what tier you join. Um, the support is, um, the support is appreciated. Okay. Thank you so much. Now back to the episode.